Happy Friday, everyone. Today's topic is hard work speaks for itself. They'll give me a promotion. I'll get a raise after I've worked here for five years. After I've worked here for three years, for X number of years, all I have to do is put my head down, do the work, be grateful that I have a job, that I have a team, that I'm working for this great, maybe great, maybe not so great company, put my head down, do the work, and then they'll give me a promotion. That's how it happens. And I'm going to guess that a lot of you have been told that, really have been sold this lie that hard work speaks for itself. Because the truth is, it doesn't. It's almost silly if you think about it. Because if you want to argue for it, Right. Either one of them can be true. We can, we can make arguments for either one, that hard work speaks for itself, and then eventually hard work alone will pay off. We can argue for that. We can make it true, but we could also make the alternative true, which is hard work doesn't speak for itself, and you have to promote. You have to evangelize the excellence that you're building. So let's argue for the first one and see how that feels and see how that sounds. That hard work speaks for itself. That, that if I do, if I show up every day at work and I work my ass off and I, and I put my head down. Now, you know, God forbid I celebrate the wins. No, 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 no. You need to be humble. You need to be grateful. Don't be too proud. So, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't wanna hear you showing off or saying how your team is winning and how you're helping the company grow and, and, and thrive. No, I don't wanna hear any of that. Put your head down, do the work, show up, and that hard work will speak for itself. And you do that for two years, three years, five years, whatever, however many of years, and then your boss comes to you after these two years, three years, five years of you, putting your head down, being practically invisible because how does your boss really know what you're doing if you're not sharing what, you're, what the wins are? But anyway, after five years, you're, you're practically invisible, you put your head down, you're, you're doing the hard work, you're working your ass off. And then your boss is gonna say, hey, congratulations, you get a, you get a promotion. Oh, and you also get a 30% raise on top of that, great work. That's not how it happens. And yet, we're sold this lie that that's how it happens, that promotions are like just handed to you. Raises are handed to you because you've worked somewhere for X number of years. It's not the years, it's the mileage. So in other words, it's not the number of years that you've worked somewhere, it's the value that you're adding. And proof of that is that people can get, and we've had clients who have gotten promotions after working somewhere for only six months, for only a year. Rob, my husband, is a perfect example of that. After he was in tech and built up his tech chops and his individual contributor chops as a software engineer for about five years or so, he moved on to another company and was in a software engineer position. But he's a leader. He is a leader through and through, and he knows how to evangelize his excellence and also how to evangelize the excellence of his team. So after working, this is when he was working at eBay. It was not eBay at that point. It was GSI, and they moved over. But anyway, um, at that point, it was GSI. It turned into eBay. He was working there for about six months, and his boss saw, wow, this guy is awesome. Let's make him a tech lead. So they made Rob a tech lead after six months of working there because he wasn't putting his head down and okay, I'm just gonna code and I'm gonna do the thing. He was building the excellence of his team and he was letting his boss and the senior leaders know, look at all this awesome stuff that's happening. And so after six months, they made him a tech lead, a team lead essentially, still in IC position, but you know, in a leadership position. 
he did that and continued to, to evangelize his excellence and build that excellence too. And then after another six months, he was made a software engineering manager. So after working there for a year, he was a manager. And now, you know, several, several years later, several promotions later, he's VP of engineering, um, not at the same company. But that is evidence, and we have plenty of other stories to back that up, that it's not about the years, it's about the value you're adding. And they, they, meaning your boss, your boss's boss, the decision makers, can't really know truly the value that you're adding unless you talk about it. Because it's very much about perception. We all live in our own little worlds, right? We're very, very focused, and sometimes rightly so, on making sure that what's in our world is all, is all put together and is working. And what your world means is your team and your focus. Your boss has a different focus. Your boss's focus is not necessarily, you know, so if you're a software engineering manager and your boss might be a director. Your boss's focus is different than yours. She or he is going to be focusing on higher level goals, higher level strategy, strategizing than you are. And she or he can't know the wins of your team, the individual contributors, without you letting them know what's going on. So we can argue that, okay, if I just put my head down and I stay quiet, I'm going to get that promotion. And maybe you have some examples of that. Maybe you have some references and, and um, evidence that this is the case. However, what I am going to tell you in my 15 plus years of experience in helping people to upgrade their careers and in looking at the hundreds of clients who we've served to help do this, that is not the norm. It is not the norm that somebody who simply just puts their head down gets a promotion, especially when we're talking about higher levels of promotion, like from promotion to manager to director, director to VP. That promotion from individual contributor to manager, sometimes that happens without you having to do much, except show that you're an awesome individual contributor and that there's some leadership potential here. Um, you know, sometimes we, we, we can call these, they're, they're sometimes called battlefield promotions and where those happen at the, or at the lower level, because there's usually this, um, this real, this need for, for lower level management, you know, the junior managers, the, the folks who are leading the teams directly. And so these battlefield promotions do happen at the lower level. Or it's like, oh, wow, I got promoted to manager. Oh, shit, what do I do? <laughs> so I have a completely new job now. And then you expect that that's how it's going to happen at higher and higher levels. But no, because you don't want a director or a VP or, God forbid, a C-level person to have just been strong-armed into that position um, without really wanting it and without really knowing what they're doing. Now look, I'm not blind to this. I know that this happens. We talk with folks all the time who talk about their boss or talk about friends that they know or we have colleagues where it's like, yeah, my CTO is a CTO, but he really shouldn't be a CTO, right? And so what happens there is that sometimes a number of things can happen. Sometimes people are just really good at evangelizing their excellence, but there's really no excellence there. Right? They're really good at marketing and self-promotion and fast talking and creating this, this vision, this perception that things are awesome and they're going to continue to be awesome and we're winning all the time when really that's not the case. Some people are really good at that. And some of them become our clients because they know, okay, I'm good at the self-promotion thing, but how do I actually build that excellence? I want to be keeping the promises that I'm making. And so that's how that happens sometimes. And sometimes it could be more of that battlefield thing. We need a CTO, hey, you. Or like if it's a smaller company, um, the, one of the founders just basically says, yep, I'm going to be CTO and is too proud, um, is too, has too much ego and can't give that up. That like, you know what, I'm not me to be CTO. So certainly 
there are, or CEO or VP of engineering or a director level, something like that. So those things happen. But if you're struggling in your career right now, especially if it's wanting to make that jump from lower level to mid-level or mid-level to upper level management, simply putting your head down is not what's going to get you there. And we're sold this lie that that's what we do. So that we, we're sold this lie that hard work speaks for itself and it doesn't. So I'm going to invite you to ask yourself a question. And this is a really powerful question that can help you shift from stuck in your career and wondering why you haven't yet got that promotion from say a manager to a director or a director of VP or VP to a C-level and like feeling like I know that I can do this, but why hasn't it happened yet to a place where it does happen and you have a path and a, and, and a, and a clear, you have that clarity about how to get there. This is, this is the powerful question. What would happen if instead of believing that hard work speaks for itself, that instead you believe evangelizing my excellence and the excellence of my team is absolutely necessary in order for me to level up and to help my team level up in the process and the company level up in the process. To shift that belief from hard work pays, or hard work will eventually pay off, hard work speaks for itself to, you know, you rip it out, you demolish it, you stomp it, you say, no, that's not actually what's going to get me there. What's going to get me there is continually, to, continually building my excellence and evangelizing it as well. And doing that every day in some form, both of them, continuing to build that excellence to show up as the best leader that you possibly can so that when you're evangelizing it, that's number two, and you're also doing that every day, it's coming from an authentic place. You're not some fast talker who's making this up and creating the perception that it actually, that it's there when it's actually not. One of the easiest ways to evangelize your excellence better is to build it, is to actually have excellence to talk about, to spread. And people are going to feel that. They're going to feel that authentic sense of, yeah, they're winning. And there is evidence for this because success leaves breadcrumbs. There are markers of success. But sometimes we don't, we don't focus on that. We don't focus on the fact that, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm putting my head down. I'm doing the hard work. There are these breadcrumbs. Yeah, don't you see them? They're here and here and here. No. Sometimes we have to pull people over compassionately, gently, but pull them over and say, see that breadcrumb right there? This is the new tool that, my, that I led my team to build. And this new tool, look at what's happening with that. The customer success rate is raising. Or we have fewer bugs because of it. Or you know, customers are more satisfied with the product now. Or if it's a service, our clients are raving about this, this, this new product or feature that we helped create. And then look over here, come here, this other, this other breadcrumb that we did. You know, so this, this upgrade to the code structure, you know, that makes it run 10 times faster now because we, we finally, you know, did what we needed to do to the legacy code to upgrade it so that the web page loads like way faster and it's a much better user experience now. We, we also partnered, oh, here's another breadcrumb over here. We partnered with the user experience team, with the product team in order to make the experience for prospective clients, for prospective customers, even better and faster and a better UI. And oh yeah, by the way, over here, here's another breadcrumb. We worked with, we worked with marketing as well because we want to make sure that we are, are serving those prospective customers as well. So we all partner together. And now what that means is, you know, our conversion rate for new, new customers went up from 10% to 20%. And we're getting fewer complaints in the checkout process or whatever it might be. Success leads breadcrumbs, but you got to point them out. And so that means really honing in on what does success mean? What does winning mean? And how can you, what are the breadcrumbs? How can you quantify them and point them out to other people? And so 
that's what you do. And this is missing in so many cases, especially if you're feeling stuck in your career. You gotta do both. You gotta build that excellence and evangelism as well. Give evidence for it. It's not fake, this is real. And so the trouble, the, the challenge I should say, is that consistently, effectively, compassionately, and genuinely evangelize, evangel, evangel, evangelizing your excellence, it's not a very straightforward thing to do. And we're not trained how to do this. You know, you don't, if you, I don't care if you have the letters PhD after your name, MBA after your name, or whatever, um, whatever other certifications. We're not trained to do this. And so what it is, is you, you may have gotten to the point where I realize I need to do this. Yes, I am ready to throw out that old belief that hard work speaks for itself, and I'm ready to evangelize my excellence instead. But how do I do this? I don't, I don't know how. I've been in my career for, you know, I've been doing it that way, head down, the, the head down, stay quiet strategy. I've been doing that for five years, 10 years, 20 years. So this is gonna mean not just building new habits, right? It's about building new habits for sure, which is hard without support, without a system. It doesn't just mean building those new habits, it means demolishing the other ones um, and really completely transforming the way that you approach your work and the way that you have conversations at work. We get so stuck in uh, habit in the way that we've always done things, that it takes that wake up call to realize, oh shit, I need to change this. If I don't change this, I'm going to continue to stay stuck. My team, think about the negative effects on your team. If you're not evangelizing the excellence of your team, you're screwing them over too because they wanna level up too. And they're looking to you as their manager, as their leader, as their guiding light to how to behave and how to act. So if you're all head down, do the work, don't talk too loud, stay quiet. No, 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 no. Be humble. No, 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 no. I don't want you to, I don't want you talking about this win. No, that, that's, no, we don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. No. If that's what you're doing, you're spreading that, that darkness, that constriction. That we're, we're, no, 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 we're not good enough. Mm. No, I'm too scared. I'm too scared to evangelize. We can't do it. You're spreading that to your team. And you're taking opportunities away from them. When we all know that this is not our purpose as leaders. Our purpose as leaders is to see what's possible, to see the invisible, to see that invisible outcome and lead our team there to know that we can help them get there. Whether it's individual outcomes, like helping that really high potential team member become an awesome individual contributor, become a visionary, a luminary, the one who's doing TED Talks and building new operating systems and, and changing the whole paradigm in terms of the way that we do tech, to, help, to see that for that person and to guide them there. Not to say, nope, head down, shut up, no. That's what you're doing, even if it's, even if it's unintentional and even, even if it's not that extreme. Making self-deprecating comments like, oh no, 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 we're not that good. No, 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 I, no. You, you, you said that we did this win. No, 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 we're just, we're just doing the work. No. Do, please don't compliment us. And by not celebrating their successes, you are inadvertently taking away from their potential. And let's not even talk about what the, what the negative effects are on your career. You're gonna stay stuck. You're not gonna level up. You're gonna retire wondering what the hell, what did I amount to? That's what's at stake here. And if that's enough for you to say, wow, I need a better way. I'm ready to show up and transform the way that I show up at work and I know it's going to be a long and winding road but walking that long and winding road, it starts with the first step. And the first step is booking a call with our team. ThePeopleStack.com slash talk. It will be, this is my solemn promise to you, 
it will be one of the most transformative, clarity-inducing, value, valuable conversations that you will ever have about your career. And I know that's a big promise, but we are here to serve you. We are committed to doing that. And we've done it hundreds of times. This is not our first rodeo. And so that's why we're able to promise that no matter what the outcome. If it's a fit for us to work together, we're gonna to show you what that looks like and we'll tell you how, it's always your decision. If it's not a fit or perhaps it's not a fit yet, we're still gonna give you the strategies, the, 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 a step-by-step -step strategy so that you know what to do now instead of just, okay, what does evangelizing your excellence mean? I don't get it. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna go back to the old, old way and just put my head down. Because that's where you're gonna go back to. That's that, that pull, that gravity toward the, that, that sort of, I'm just gonna keep doing what I've been doing because that's what's easier. If you wanna get out of that, snap yourself out of that nonsense, then you gotta take different action. Action, you gotta take bold action. So if you're ready to do that, book a call, book a call with our team, thepeoplestack.com slash talk. So that's it for the day, folks. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I'll see you again next Wednesday for, uh, for our next video. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.